Boy, talk about a discouraging event. The crash uh, not only destroyed a $150 roughing mill, but it uh, knocked my vice out of tram by over 20 thousandths and somehow propagated an electrical problem that put my mill out of commission for about two weeks. So needless to say, nothing much got done during that time. I worked sporadically on and off trying to trace the origins of the electrical problem, but the schematic that I had for wiring, wire numbers did not match what was in the actual uh, electrical panel of the mill, so that, that made matters complicated. Finally, I did get it back up and running, but what I could not recover was the lost uh, two weeks of time where nothing got done on the projects. So in the meantime, I thought it was an opportune uh, moment to step back to some footage I shot a little over a year ago and uh, happened to be able to go to the Western Museum of Mining and Industry in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'd been meaning to visit that, uh, that museum and I got close enough uh, by a work trip to Denver where I drove over to Colorado Springs because they have a fully restored, you know, museum quality Skinner steam engine with its dynamo. And so I, um, you know, took some video of that uh, running with uh, compressed air and just some stills and video of other neat stuff they had at the museum. So I hope that you enjoy this little field trip to the Western Museum of Mining and Industry. And then we'll be back with more machining now that the mill is up and running again. I'm at the Museum of Mining and Industry in Colorado and I'm here taking in the sights of a fully restored Skinner steam engine with its dynamo. Uh, this is a little bit larger engine than mine. I believe this is probably about a 14 by 15. I'm going to see if I can find out on the data plates what it is. And it has a beautifully restored dynamo. Westinghouse. Oh, this is a direct current. 50 kilowatt, 125 volt. 400 amps and there's that magic number, 300 RPM. So this engine would be set up for operation at 300 RPM, which is what I'm going to be setting mine up for. There's beautiful nickel work on the cylinder. This is a, a band. These are uh, jacketing um, uh, plates that cover up some insulation. And the nickel covers are in beautiful condition. All of those top covers are nickel plated cast iron, which is one of the things I hope to do to mine when I have the time and money. This engine really is a work of art. It's kind of amazing when you think of the patterns that would be required to reproduce these big castings and get all of those graceful curves. These were really, you know, master woodworkers for their day. This flywheel is crowned for driving a belt. And if you notice that this one, um, serial number on this, 7745. So it's, it's a very early engine. And the eccentric rod uh, is this pin type. So the governor pivot is here. And the eccentric offset from here to here um, moves this pin, and then it's just a spherical seat, just like the connection at the other end, to drive the reversing lever to reverse the direction of the slide valve. There's not a lot of narration through some of this. Um, I was just trying to do a thorough walk around and kind of drink in the sights of the engine. And I didn't want to be yakking here to myself uh, in front of the other visitors in the shop, but it was a fairly uh, quiet day, so I did have some some time uh, that I was able to spend uh, just looking it over very carefully. Can't see the evidence of what the data plate says here. Not sure if that covers original. Another thing I'm missing is a nice valve, shutoff valve for admission of steam. 
and the indicator ports are just capped. Mine has the indicating uh, tricocks and, and uh, ports to set up an indicator. Lubricator is in beautiful condition. This is the automatic lubrication patent plate. When I ran the footage in my editing software, I was able to determine that the engine was spinning at 135 RPM. So I sped it up and uh, put it on a loop to simulate what 300 RPM would sound like, which is what uh, I'm targeting for my, uh, my Skinner engine. So there's a means to adjust the phasing of this brush assembly and for a DC unit I don't understand why that has an adjustment but that does appear to be what it does is rotate the entire brush assembly relative to the frame RPM at full potential with using steam this guy would have burned about 100 RPM oh really uh, he was using a paper mill back in Massachusetts. They actually had two of these. And around 1970 or so, they decided to modernize or whatever. And uh, so they said, well, we're getting rid of this thing. If you figure out a way to get it, <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> so yeah, it took about uh, well, quite a few uh, flat cars to bring it out here on rail. Sure. And then uh, quite a few truckloads to get it out here. And this is just a big milk farm, this whole uh, 20 some odd acres here. And uh, so they you know, dug the hole, put in the foundation, put it in there, and then built the building around it. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to. That thing yeah. is. Well, that's what the museum is here, right? <laughs> you see yeah, that's a big one, isn't it? You said the nuts? I'll go ahead and start it up here. You're welcome to walk around, stay yeah. on the carpet, please. And uh, check out all the workings. Okay. Let me see them. Let me see if it's starting to work.
Same kind of thing, being a single piston, I gotta make sure I stop them in the right spot so we can get them going again. What do you think, you son? I'm sorry? The, main, the, the make of this, what type of pump? Downy. Downy. Yeah, it's a Downy, um, and they call it a, a displacement steam. 1800? Uh, yeah, about. Like I said, he's about, uh, the other tank's probably a little more than 120 years old now. Uh, okay, so anyway, that gives you an idea of the equipment we've got here, the working equipment. So, That's awesome. Uh, thank you guys for coming.
This cylinder that you're looking at is a one-man elevator cage for going up a shaft and it is not very big. It's a ride I would not want to be on. I'd have to have my eyes closed the whole way. Thanks for indulging me in watching this uh, slideshow and a few operating engines from the Western Mining Museum in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I wanted to see this Skinner engine done up properly and uh, I've got some good video and photos of it for a reference to use in restoring my Skinner engine. And uh, on the plus side, you know, pretty much every piece of mine is there with the exception of the dynamo. I'm not going to be driving a dynamo anyway. But the uh, cylinder, the end of the cylinder and the steam chest cover, all of those are original. I think that the ones on the on the uh, museum engine were replaced. But uh, those are going to get a bright nickel uh, replating job. And this thing ought to look just spectacular when it's done. So follow that project and uh, others on uh, Engineers Workshop. Please subscribe, uh, like, and share the videos. Help the channel grow. Thanks again. Stay safe.